Hi everyone! Welcome to another learning episode. Today, I'll share with you about qualitative research and its three research design approaches. But before that, let me first give you a review on the differences between quantitative research and qualitative research. By the way, if you want to know a more detailed discussion about the differences between the two, you can actually watch our video uploaded last month. So the differences between quantitative research and qualitative research is Quantitative research is a type of research that investigates numerical data. If you are someone who wants to know about the level, the impact, the extent, the prevalence, then you are actually doing a quantitative research. In this type of research, we give out survey forms, research questionnaire, and checklist for us to identify the average, the mean, the frequency, the percentage, or sometimes the significant differences and the significant relationship using statistical tools. Meanwhile, for qualitative research, it's completely different from quantitative research because with qualitative research, we are investigating non-numerical data. So the data that we have at hand are based on the thought process of our conversation partners, based on their words, based on their experiences, based on our interview transcripts, or sometimes based on the documents for content analysis. Now, if you are someone who wants to work on a qualitative research, it's very important to select one research design approach. And if you don't know yet what research design approach are you going to use for the research title that you have in mind, we are going to discuss the three qualitative research design approaches for all of you, starting off with the phenomenological research design. This type of qualitative research design gathers information about how individuals experience a phenomenon and how they feel about it. So the unique experience of the conversation partner or the participant of the study is given emphasis and importance in this type of approach. The outcome of the research is described from the point of view of our participants of the study or the conversation partners. The results of the study will help in identifying themes surrounding the phenomena under study. For instance, in my master thesis, I work on a phenomenological research design approach for my qualitative research study and the phenomenon I was studying at that time was about inclusive senior high school classroom with students with hearing impairment. Well, you might be asking why I pursue that research title. It's because there was a literature gap at that time I couldn't find enough data about the experiences of students and teachers who handle senior high school classes with students with hearing impairment because as, as you know, we don't have a specific senior high school teacher that would cater to the needs of our special education senior high school students. So in, I studied classrooms with two sets of group the hearing group and the other one are the students with hearing impairment. So I ask questions to students with hearing impairment as well as their teachers about their experiences in a phenomenon such as that. And then during the interview, I identified so many patterns and identified concepts and I learned so many things about the inclusive senior high school classroom with students with hearing impairment. And that's it, you can pursue that same thing also, you just find a phenomenon that you're really interested in and you find that it's very relevant and you believe that it's necessary to work on that because there's no enough literature yet or you want to dig deeper into it and understand it more. Now another research title I could provide to you guys is this one, An Evolving Self. Finding Meaning in New Death Experiences Among Teenagers Using Phenomenological Analysis. So the phenomenon under study is about near death experiences and then the participants in the study are our teenagers who came across this or who experienced this one. And using phenomenological analysis, you are going to understand the phenomenon or the phenomena better based on the perspectives of your participants or the conversation partners of your study. Now let's proceed to the second qualitative research design approach, which is the content analysis. Content analysis is a methodological approach that systematically examines various types of communication such as literary pieces, documents, articles, speeches, 
audio and video recording, social media posts, or any other forms of qualitative data. The main purpose of content analysis is to identify patterns, themes, specific elements, so we will be able to understand the subject matter being studied even more. So the researchers in this type of approach, content analysis approach, code and categorize the data to identify recurring words, phrases, sentences, concepts, and themes. So now I'll be providing you two research titles for content analysis approach. The first one is an analysis of selected picture books examining the portrayal of sex roles and representation of males and females. So what qualitative data are we going to examine or investigate in the first title? Of course, it's the selected picture book books. And then we're going to figure out how the portrayal of sex roles are inhibited in the picture books and at the same time, how males and females are represented and then for the other one is investigation of nursery rhymes according to the classification of semantic fields. So these, uh, the first one is more on the gender and development, and then the second one is more on the linguist linguistic side of the content analysis. So the qualitative data we are analyzing are the nursery rhymes, and then we're going to figure out the semantic fields. So the third research design approach is what we call the narrative and career research design. This type of approach focuses on the study of individuals and collective stories and narratives. The researcher in this type of approach use interviews, observations, and any other forms of narrative expressions. The main purpose of narrative inquiry is to uh, understand deeply the complexities and nuances of human experiences and to explore how humans construct and make sense of the world through storytelling. So the difference between phenomenological research design approach is phenomenological research design approach centers on the phenomenon being studied. Okay, the phenomenon being experienced by a group of people. While narrative inquiry focuses more on the lives of the individuals, their narratives, okay? So one research title I'm going to share with you guys is this one, uh, The Power of Resilience, Narratives of Cancer Survivors. Okay, you can actually study group of people and then the lives of group of people and then you can also study the life of a single person. For instance, in my case, since I'm living in Negros Occidental near Dr. Ramon Bustillo Hospital, I'd like to know more about his life so I could work on a narrative inquiry like the narrative of the father of orthopedics because Dr. Ramon Bustillo is the father of orthopedics. I could just go to him, interview him about his life, and then uh, make a story out from the life of a very famous person, of a person who contributed great impact in the society. So that could be narrative inquiry also. Now my challenge for you guys is to find a research, a quality of research title specifically that you want to work on with and something that is relevant and you're really interested in. And then right after finding or listing down the research titles you'd like to work with, then the next thing that you're going to do is to pick which research design approach suits your research title. So once you already pick one, then that's the time you think of the method, your research questions, or your overarching question, and then proceed to working on your research paper. So I know, I hope you have learned something from this episode. See you in our next one. Bye! Keep on learning!